Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Krzysztof Książek, and uh, I will be talking about um, load balancers in MySQL. So there are a couple of choices we can make, and I would like to give some sort of like uh, overview of what we can do uh, in a MySQL world. So uh, first of all, I will be talking about you know what is the load balancer and why we might actually need it. Yes, what is the purpose of this? tool, basically. Um, I will go through types of the load balancers, um, and uh, I will give some examples about, um, you know, for, for every uh, type that we have covered here. And I'll finally talk about health checks, which can be used with some of the proxies to enhance their abilities to, to, to make them like work better, basically, with MySQL. So, why load balancers? Well, uh, first of all, it's all about high availability, right? So, for high availability, we have to have like two nodes at least, right? So, we have two nodes, uh, and uh, we have to have some sort of ability to, when, you know, to, to understand when the node fails and then to do something with the connections. So, load balancers can do this for us, basically. Um, performance. Um, basically, this is also we have like set of nodes. Let's say we have like three nodes, five nodes in Galera cluster, or uh, or we have a master and a couple of slaves, right? So we have high ability because we can fail over to to some other node, slave, whatever. Uh, but we also want to be able to utilize them. Yes. So we want uh, something, some tool, to uh, to to scale out to help us scale out reads by you know, distributing them across um, multiple nodes, basically. And again, uh, load balancers can help us here. Um, to some extent, some of the load balancers, it can also help us to uh, minimize the number of connections to the database. I'm talking about uh, connection multiplexing. So basically, let's say that your application opens, let's say, 2,000 connections to, um, to, to, to the database, right? But most of the time, like those connections are idle, and even the, if connection is idle, it still somewhat uses resources, obviously. Um, so the uh, load balancer, which supports connection multiplexing, might be able to squeeze uh, those 2,000 connections, let's say in 100, by re re reusing connections for, to the backend for different connections from the application. Um, Another pretty important reason that we might want to use load balancers is to um, keep complexity of the database tier away from the application. Uh, because database tier is basically, I mean, it is complex, right? There's topology, we have like master slaves, we have, uh, we have a Galera. Those nodes, those, they can have different states, like Galera can be you know, work as a donor, can be joined, uh, can be primary and non-primary. Masters can be uh, my score application can be master, can be slave. Um, so we this is a pretty complex topic, right, for the application, and we could use some kind of middleman that hides this away. So the application just connects to a like black box, connects to one single point of entry. And the rest of the magic happens like behind the scenes. Like so the, the load balancer would check the node state, would understand topology changes, like masters promoted, like new master shows up, then writes will be redirected. Yes. So um, again, useful because I mean we can try to do something from like, handle this from inside the application. Uh, but then th the thing is that code has to be written, tested, deployed. And if some change, if some condition requires basically um, some update to the logic, this can take a while before we go through the whole process. While uh, for the load balancer for the proxy, it's basically a matter of reconfiguration, much faster. Um, of course, we can benefit from some additional features. Like, for example, if we have this proxy as um, like a gateway to, to this one point of entry to the database tier, um, 
or, or then those this proxy or those proxies they all the traffic pass through them so we can collect some performance data right we can um, see how queries perform how many of them have latency so we can get this data and then we can like do something about it right um, we can also rewrite queries as they pass the proxy because some of the proxies have this ability. So for example, um, we are talking maybe simple stuff like index hints, you know, add, um, use index, force index, ignore index. Um, but it also can be uh, used for some more complex rewrites. Even well, if the query is very, very bad, you can just always change it to turn it to select one. Um, not much of a help for the application, but databases will survive, at least for a while. Um, and of some of the proxies, the load balancers give you also ability to uh, basically do some more advanced routing. So uh, you have some sort of query rules, uh, which can be then applied to, to, the, to the queries, and then you can move either, for example, you can stick a query to, to a master or to a slave, or it can be more advanced, like using regular expressions to, to pick one particular query and let's say, say send it to an um, analytic slave. Uh, so let's go through some of the examples. First of all, application connectors. Um, I'll have like two examples here, MySQL ND and Connector J. MySQL ND is a native driver for PHP. Um, it can be used to implement read by split in PHP application. It supports file over handling, so it can move uh, connections uh, if the node fails, basically. It can, like, from one slave to another, for example. Uh, it supports uh, query routing modifications through hints, so you can send a particular query to a master if, for some reason, you want, to, want this query to get the most up-to-date results. Um, connector J is pretty similar, slightly more advanced. Uh, also handles failovers. Um, the, well, what it can do better is that it can kind of um, support the live reconfiguration of topology. So what you can do is uh, like you have a pool of servers, like pool of slaves, pool of masters, and then basically you can, um, if the host, I mean, if, if the master is down, then you can remove it from the pool of masters and one of the slaves move there, for example. So it's just slightly. More, um, more options you have to, to manage the replication topology. My personal problem with application connectors is that uh, they do not really hide the complexity from, uh, from the application. Uh, and the more advanced features, they re still require some code. And as I said, the code, if need to be changed, and just process of, of writing, rewriting, testing, deploying, and this is not flexible enough. Uh, for, uh, for, for me as a DBA at least. Uh, reverse proxies. So um, first of all, AG proxy, which is basically industry standard. Um, the problem with AG proxy is that it does not really understand MySQL. So it's uh, just a TCP level, it just moves packets. But if we enhance it with some additional scripts that I'll be talking about uh, towards the end, uh, it can do load balancing it, for MySQL, uh, MySQL backends. It can scale, help to, uh, us to scale out in the supports, it supports failover of the connections. Um, but as I said, it, by, 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 on its own, it does not really uh, understand much of MySQL. So uh, it, what it can do, it can uh, just check if 3306 is open. <laughs> Um, and, or you can check if there is basically um, authentication string that's showing when it connects to 306. Um, so as it does not have understanding of uh, understanding of, of MySQL topology or um, the uh, MySQL protocol, uh, it don't don't understand queries. So uh, if you want to perform, for example, read write split, like send queries, to, so selects to, to slaves and distribute them, and send uh, the MLs to, to master, uh, you have to use uh, two different backends, uh, different ports. Um, and this could be a problem because your application has to understand, um, has to know how to split selects from, uh, from the rest of the queries. 
uh, double crowns uh, reg regarding the uh, whole problem of understanding the MySQL states. Um, for example, Procaster Track uh, script created by Percona. Uh, and I'll talk about this uh, slightly later. But in general, that's, that's how it works uh, with uh, AJ Proxy. And here's an example of, uh, of configuration for a um, read write split. So basically, as you can see, we have two backends, 3307, 3308. 3307 serves reads because we have like three hosts configured in round robin. 3308 is used for writes. We have one host available, two hosts set as a backup. And pretty important, uh, all backups is, is disabled. So basically when this server is not, will be, become not available, then one of those backup hosts will be used. Um, keep alive D. I mean, usually you just use KeepAlifeD to, to move virtual, I, virtual IP around. And if we are talking about high availability, this is enough. So, um, so for example, it can be used like if you have a Galera cluster, let's say three nodes, um, you, and then you just set up uh, KeepAlifeD and set virtual IP on one of those nodes. Um, of, course, of course, you won't get scaling out, but if the gallery dies, then uh, virtual IP will be, will be moved. So high availability is there. So it can work for gallery cluster. It can work for, for example, master-master um, pair, like mass active standby type of approach. Um, it, if you happen to use DRBD, it can work as well. So we have like two nodes, and then basically virtual IP is, is moved around if the first node, the active node, fails. Um, I'm not going into details how it can be configured, but in general, um, it's also, I mean, it does not understand MySQL state at all. So it can be used with, uh, for example, uh, cluster check to, to actually add this level of understanding of, of MySQL. Um, and well, as I said, no scaling out, but for high availability, it is enough. Um, Nginx, so um, usually you think of Nginx as a HTTP server or HTTP proxy, uh, but since 1.9, uh, it can be also used as a TCP proxy, and therefore it can be used um, well, just like HTTP proxy for MySQL. Uh, there are two flavors, like the free version is limited slightly, and no configurable port for health checks, so you cannot configure it that uh, health checks are executed on one port and you send data to another. Um, paid version has this uh, limitation removed, and it can be used with, uh, for example, cluster check script to, uh, to do the stuff. Functionality is pretty similar to AJProxy. Uh, again, a device split using two ports. Um, the difference is that uh, it handles differently backup servers. So as I showed in Azure Proxy, um, if you disable this backup, uh, all backups option, then uh, you have one, one, option, one backup server shows in if the primary server goes down. Here, both would show up. So uh, you have to just keep it to, to, to one uh, backup server at, at a time. Um, and yes? Sorry, could you? Uh, you're here or, or uh, AJ proxy? Yeah. yeah, so basically, the difference is that uh, if you will put like tr more of the backup servers in the backend in, H in Nginx, if the first uh, this active server fails, bot will become available and bot will start you know, showing up at that backend as online. So that's, uh, well, if you're running Galera, this could be fine, but if you're running an application, that would not really work well. Um, and the thing is that as it does not really support um, the, uh, this, uh, this free version, it doesn't support this um, health check on a separate location, uh, then basically you have to use, I mean, uh, my colleague Ashraf Sharif put together a script which uh, kind of 
goes around this limitation, and I'll talk about it later. Um, SQL proxies, SQL hour proxies. So first of all, max scale. Um, I mean, in the past, uh, there happened to be a product called MySQL proxy. Uh, it was used. Um, it never actually reached the GA state, from what I remember. Um, but it used Lua, um, but then at some point it was kind of like moved, uh, deprecated, kind of. Um, then in 2015, uh, MaxScale showed up. And, uh, and basically this was really, really great stuff for the DBAs. Uh, it was designed to uh, handle the dry split. It understood replication topology. Um, it was able to uh, track the state of backends. So, well, it just, you just put max scale in front of your uh, replication uh, cluster or Galera cluster, and it just worked. Max scale supports SSL, uh, both client and server side. Um, it uh, supports replication, Galera, MySQL cluster. Uh, it supports uh, statement hinting, so you can send queries to, um, to, to master or to slave, for example, if you want to avoid this problem with stale reads. Um, you can also define that, the, for example, the host that is, will be receiving the query cannot be lagging for more than some value, like five, five seconds or so. Um, supports Nalgios integration. Um, it supports query mirroring. And in uh, version 2.1, which is uh, like pretty, I mean, it's in beta state right now. Um, there is a query caching that's coming in, uh, results at masking, so you can uh, basically mm, send your data, get your data obfuscated if you like the credit card numbers or some sort of um, private data and you want to still have the, give the access to the data for, let's say, developers. Uh, so results at limiting and uh, cons uh, consistent critical reads. Uh, what it means is that um, basically there's an you, you can define that, for example, for some time, like two seconds, five seconds, whatever, uh, after a write, the queries, the selects will be sent only to master, which obviously limits the um, scaling abilities. Uh, but it makes sure that you won't get this uh, read after write problems. Uh, and I forgot to add the, the caching. Uh, it's uh, for now at least uh, TTL based. So you just set TTL for a query and then it's just is removed uh, from the cache. So no other mechanism of uh, controlling the memory utilization. Uh, MaxScale uses like uh, routers, some kind of modules um, that are designed to do well, different things. Um, this list is definitely not full, it's just like some examples. So you have a router which can be used to perform read write split. It just analyzes the queries and then it just you know, sends selects to, 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 to uh, slaves, for example, and, uh, and writes to master. Um, there is a router which supports round robin um, access to, to the database. Uh, there's a router which works basically as a firewall for the queries. So you can define a query based on a regular expression and then just uh, well, drop it, for example. Um, schema router supports uh, sharding uh, based on the schema. So you can uh, just define multiple schemas on different hosts and then uh, use, utilize this router to, to implement sharding. A uh, binlock router which turns basically max scale into a binary lock server, which is pretty uh, one of the use cases for actually for the proxy. Uh, this Avro router, you can also send uh, blocks to Kafka. So there are a couple of, couple of different features that you can, modules that you can use and that you can use and, uh, well, and to modify the way how the max scale works, basically. A um, couple of design decisions uh, were taken. Um, so first of all, um, one of the, 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 the summary is that the transaction should be transactional. So if you execute a query within a transaction, like you start the transaction, come uh, begin or start transaction, um, then every single query will be sent to master. 
So it kind of makes sense because if um, well, if you start a transaction, the proxy has no way to know uh, if this will be a read-only transaction or you start issuing writes at some point. So uh, pretty obviously, it can it has to be executed on a master. Um, same with pro stored procedures, user-defined functions, prepared statements. They are also sent to to master only. Um, this is kind of limits the scalability, but make sure that things are kind of safe when it comes to, to transaction in uh, SQL. Uh, session variables and settings are sent to all hosts. So, um, so basically, you, there's open connections to, to every every backend, and then uh, those connections are having the same uh, set, session settings uh, to to every one of them. So. When there's a failover, the connection retains the state of those uh, local variables or, or settings that was, was there. Um, and there's, there's no connection multiplexing. Um, there are some problems in max scale. Um, so first of all, uh, there's lack of real-time stat traffic statistics. So you, you, you don't have a way to uh, get the data out of max scale. Um, no, this has been slightly improved in 2.1, so some data about queries, number of queries you can, uh, you can find. Uh, no remote admin interface, it was removed in 2.0 um, due to security reasons. Um, so the configuration settings had to be done, uh, has to be done or right now the config and changes in the max uh, configuration and it requires max restart. Uh, this has been improved in 2.1 again, so you can add uh, servers or, or listeners in uh, like on the runtime. Um, no more advanced routing configuration, so you just use hints. No regular expression-based routing, for example. Um, and the thing is that there were some problems with uh, scalability, and there are some problems with scalability in a current uh, GA like 2.0 branch of MaxScale. Um, and I'll show you uh, graphs. In a moment, um, non-GPL licensing starting from 2.0, so uh, they use a uh, business source license. So basically, up to two nodes, uh, max scale is free. For more, you have to pay. Uh, there is a GPL fork of 1.3 branch called Airbnb Max Scale, which is like focused on uh, on the uh, binary rock server functionality. But so if you want, you can you can try it um, to, to see how it goes. So basically, that's what, um, I don't know how it's, if it's clear or not, but the, the problem with the, um, with the max scale that I have is um, the scalability. So first of all, on the left we have uh, max scale 2.0 running on eight internal threads. And you can see, compared to max scale 2.1, that first of all, it's really scattered, uh, and in general, the performance is slower. Um, there were some serious problems reported by Vadim Kachenko from Percona, um, that is not really scalable uh, when it comes to, when we are adding more and more like uh, concurrently running connections. Um, and here is uh, the, when you, so the problem is that uh, read, the read write split router, it tend to be CPU heavy. If uh, you, you like uh, fully saturate your eight CPUs, on eight threads, you might think that you will just, you know, uh, add more threads for give more threads for max scale to to, to um, speed things up. But in fact, as you can see, performance on 16 threads is even more reduced. So this has not been uh, this unfortunately has not been um, fixed in 2.1. While the performance is better, the scalability for uh, for, for the thread, internal threads it's not. Um, and another problem: the latency variation. So, uh, basically, at the bottom line, there's 95 percentile because it's just very small compared to to this uh, latency that you can see here. Green lines is latency for it's maximum latency for uh, max k 2.0 on 16 threads, and those ticks is maximum latency uh, for max k 2.0 on 8 threads. So as you can see, it's just huge. At some point, maximum latency reaches even like 25 seconds. Um, so this has been luckily improved in 2.1, so I'm looking forward to see it like, uh, in a stable version. But for now, that's how it looks. And 
as you can see, numbers. Like we have 16 connections, 95% 0.45, maximum for uh, 400 milliseconds. Um, 200 connections, 95% uh, 2.35, maximum five and five seconds. 30, uh, 320 connections, that's just uh, 3.68 and uh, more than seven seconds. So basically for some reason, one of the threads was stuck for like five, seven seconds before it actually completed its query. So again, this is 2.0, it has been improved in 2.1. So as long, if you're using max scale, if you, um, I would suggest to upgrade once it will become available. Because well, for me, this is, it really looks bad. Uh, proxy SQL. It was also announced in 2015, created by René Canal. Um, and it was basically designed with very like, with complex topologies like tens of servers, hundreds of servers, sharding, so on and so forth. Um, you can implement device split via query rules. Um, it supports multiple host groups. Uh, by host group, I mean um, set of hosts which serve the same purpose. So like. Um, master or uh, slaves, um, analytical slaves, maybe backup slaves or, or ad hoc slaves or whatever. Um, tracks held on uh, the backends on per query basis. I'll talk a little bit about more later. Um, and it basically utilizes query rules uh, for uh, regular expressions to, to, to do, well, really nice magic with the queries. What is good about it is that, I mean, at least for me as a DBA, it uses SQL uh, as, uh, in the admin interface, which makes it easy to, uh, to script. Um, it also like, uses like MySQL-ish type of language. Like for example, we can set vari variables using uh, set. Um, what I also like is this uh, like Cisco-like uh, configuration approach. So basically there are three levels of configuration uh, there is this persistent storage on a uh, on disk. You have also in memory buffer which you make changes uh, to the configuration, and then you have a configuration which is actually running like a runtime. So if you make some changes, for example, you can do uh, like set of changes. You can add a couple of servers, run some couple of inserts, and then apply those changes to. And this everything happens in this memory buffer. And then you apply those changes to um, to, 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 in, to running uh, configuration. If it, something goes wrong, then you can always recover your old configuration from this on, from disk persistent storage. Um, virtually every set setting can be changed dynamically without maybe some exceptions like threads uh, that's used for process code internally. Um, and the query rules, there's gives you really, really huge uh, flexibility. Like you can match using you know, query uh, regular expression, um, digest of the query, uh, like user, schema, IP. It's just really a bunch of options to, 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 to identify the queries. And then you can do actions, right? You can um, route queries based on those couple of conditions to different host groups. You can chain them, you can uh, configure mirroring, you can uh, rewrite the queries. To, to, to some other uh, form. Um, you can implement, uh, you, you can decide that this particular query should be cached, like um, you can define TTL for it. And there's actually a variable that sets a memory limit. So um, you have kind of slightly more control over the cache size than in the max scale. Um, so proxy SQL supports connection multiplexing. Uh, so as I said at the beginning, it is basically designed to minimize the number of connections to, to the backend. Um, in 1.4, which is currently announced as beta, um, there's this na native support for MySQL uh, rep group replication. And of course, MySQL replication is supported for in a current uh, uh, stable version also. Uh, Galera cluster is supported through external scripts. So uh, there are um, examples of those scripts, uh, I mean, included in Proxy SQL. But there are also some blogs, like Marco Tusa had a, um, had a nice blog uh, describing a very detailed um, and precise script that just goes like every every single possibility that might, you might run it when you're running Galera. Uh, so you can just implement whatever you like. Um, 
as I said, Proxy SQL does not, it uses a slightly different approach to monitoring uh, health of the backends. So typically what you see is that you have some sort of monitoring that just does ping, checks the if the server responds. If it responds, then well, it's healthy and we can send queries there. Uh, but the problem is that, well, between this ping and the query, there's some time passes and obviously everything can, may happen during that time. So uh, what query process SQL does, and I think this is the only sane way of doing the help checks, basically sends query. If query succeeds, it, well, the backend is healthy, right? If query cannot be executed for some reason, the backend is not healthy. Uh, process SQL uses a monitoring module um, to handle cases in which, um, in which uh, there's a, like network, like the packets are got lost in the process because then it would be just waiting for a timeout. Uh, so there's a module which just checks if such connection happens, it just gives it and marks the backend as, uh, as uh, unavailable. Uh, and of course, uh, as we know, you know, this data is passing through the proxy, proxy school gives you insight into uh, statistics. Like you can, I don't know how you can see it, but you can information about a host group, schema, user, um, there's a digest, of a query which kind of identifies it, a number of connection, a number of times the query has been executed, uh, when it was seen, uh, like a summary time, more or less the same type of data you can find in uh, like query, so query log. Um, so Proxy SQL unfortunately does not support uh, client side SSO, it's on the roadmap, but it's been there for a while, so hard to tell when it will be actually available. Um, there's, so, the, actually, the, the biggest problem I have personally with proxy SQL is that, and it's kind of related to, uh, to this design decision. Uh, so it's not really uh, how it serves, trans uh, works with transactions, it's really tricky. So uh, basically, if it works well in the cases where you have uh, like multiple shards and you have multiple writers, uh, every shard has a master, and then you can't really determine, there's, there's no like one single uh, writer in a configuration, in a topology. But uh, for smaller setups, if you would like to uh, have um, like, you know, just transactions, like you, you, you send, like Max Kill does, send everything to master, you have to be really careful when you implement it because otherwise it, you can end up in a situation basically when you just, uh, you, you start the transaction and you think that you're running transaction, but in fact, for example, you're just uh, sending rights to master and reading from a slave. So, well, not, not, not what, you, what you need to do and not what you want. So you have to, I mean, it is possible to configure, especially in 1.4, which right now everything is configurable, but you have to be really caution and make sure that you do it right because otherwise it can be just tricky. Uh, likewise with session variables. You have to do it, like, handle it on your own. And again, it is something uh, which you have to take care of and you have to be, you know, uh, make it right. Because otherwise this could become a problem at some point. Um, there's no uh, direct Nagios integration. Um, as I said, the support for Galera is used by external scripts. Um, and it, it, there's no uh, like advanced uh, logic, uh, logging options, so you cannot just, it just logs to a simple, a simple uh, file, from what I understand, yes. Oh, okay, so basically I'm talking about, uh, because in general the idea is that when you, uh, you, you have to create a query rules for session variables, like coach this set at, and then send it to the writer that you want. That's, that's, that's the thing. Um, and, and basically this is, max skill does it for you, process skill, you have to take care of it on your own, which is kind of a drawback. If you, especially if you don't know that you have to do it. This could be a problem. And basically there's much more into this, and, but I, I, it's not really a time for, for going into details about the process SQL handling, because you have connection multiplexing, you have persistent transactions, you have a bunch of different tweaks that you can do, which kind of define how this is actually works. So, um, yeah. But as I said, it, it is kind of tricky. 
uh, MySQL router. So it's created by Oracle. Um, basically, it's, it was designed to build, uh, like to, to, to build AJ on top of, of MySQL. Um, it's used MySQL harness. Um, it kind of was designed to, to also to work with MySQL Fabric, and now it is used as part of uh, MySQL InnoDB cluster. Um, so it's just like a um, block in AJ stack for, uh, for, for the MySQL. So if you define, I mean, in the past, when you just configured it manually, you had to define backends, uh, like you can set them as a read-only or as a read-write. For the read-only read -only backends, the queries connections will be routed in a round-robin fashion. For writes, one, the, 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 the first active will be picked. Right now, it's just slightly, slightly different because everything you can do through the MySQL shell. So it just does like magic automatically. You don't have to configure it. Um, there's a support for MySQL Fabric, so you can, uh, actually that's an example on the right. You can see that the destination are set as uh, uh, high FBT groups for MySQL Fabric. Um, and then it just sends queries there and the topology detection happens in MySQL Fabric. So it just sends the queries to selects to, 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 to uh, slave and writes to uh, master, obviously. Um, it is, uh, well, as I said, it's part of, of the MySQL in the DB cluster, like stack. Um, so you can, as you can deploy MySQL in the DB cluster from MySQL shell, you can also deploy, uh, deploy uh, MySQL router from MySQL shell. Um, it also provides support for you know, the metadata schema. It caches the, data, the metadata, so it gives a little bit more of the high ability. Uh, for the whole uh, InnoDB cluster. Um, health checks. So, as, uh, as you might have seen, um, we have those SQL aware proxies, which are, uh, well, they, they, they understand the state of MySQL, they can root queries, they can understand the pro MySQL protocol. And we have uh, proxies like AJPROX or NGINX or, or KeepAlive D, which cannot do this, right? So um, for those proxies to actually implement some sort of understand, understanding of MySQL topology and MySQL states, um, some health checks have been created, some external scripts. Uh, one of them is uh, the most popular, I guess, is the cluster check created by Percona. So um, basically, how it works, it, it just creates a HTTP check for AJ proxy. So you configure your AJ proxy to connect to some port and does HTTP check there. And then based on the result of this check, um, you know, the, the host is marked as available or not. By default, I mean, it, it was designed to, to work with Galera, but there are pretty, you can easily find a modification or you can easily make a modi modification which will work uh, for MySQL replication. So in Galera, it uses WSREP local state um, to, to check whether you know this um, primary, primary, non-primary, the sync, joiner, joining, whatever. Uh, for MySQL replication, you can basically use read-only flag for that. Um, it's so for this or, in this original form, you can define how it should handle uh, donors. Because at some point, I mean, you, you, you either may want to use donor to, to serve reads, or you may not. Depends on how you how you like to how it works in your topology. Because technically speaking, if the donor if the host is set in a Galera node is set in a donor testing state, it may lag. So you may get basically stale reads. Um, how it works? So uh, so basically, you have the script uh, installed on the Galera node. Uh, you have uh, signed the service by default is port uh, 9200. Um, and then you have uh, AJ proxy configured to, to do a health check on 9200. Uh, it executes this signed the uh, well, job, the service. The service executes the script and the script returns HTTP codes like 200 if uh, if uh, the host is available and can be, should be reachable uh, to uh, 503 if it is not. 
Um, so, so, so basically, pretty, pretty simple, uh, pretty simple um, technique. So, by default, it's executed uh, directly from XINAD. So you just run health check. It executes the script. It connects to my school. It checks some logic, and then um, and then returns the the output, the, the values. Um, I, I have seen cases in which, like, if you started to have uh, this health check executed too often, it become a problem for for MySQL. Um, and one of the go arounds uh, that I found, well, actually, my uh, my colleague from ex colleague from Palomino DB, ex Palomino DB uh, wrote that. Uh, it says like a slightly different approach. So you have like script which checks the state, um, it's executed by cron like every minute, and basically it just stores the state in the, in the, uh, in the shared memory. And then the, you have this XINED service which just checks the value of this shared memory file and then, so you, you, you run uh, the script on MySQL every second, uh, every minute basically. There's uh, some sort of delay but usually it is still kind of acceptable. Um, and on the right hand side, you can see a simple like example of of the service uh, for um, for the uh, for the XINED. Um, another tool it was it's uh, created by my colleague uh, from several lines, Ashraf Sharif. Um, so basically, there was a problem that we had to make Nginx working with uh, with MySQL. And um, the approach that he took is that, I mean, the, the problem, okay, the problem is to solve is that the Nginx can just connect to, to the host, to the port that it will be sending traffic to. So for MySQL, you have to set, um, um, it, it checks the health on the port 206, right, by default. So, um, so, so what, what he did, basically, it just uh, used IP tables to set up a direction from port 3308 to 3306. Uh, so basically, and, and then used this, uh, this port in uh, Nginx. And then you have the, the script was running as a, as, a, um, as a daemon, and like some, some time every second or so, it just checked the state of the MySQL. If the node should be available, then the this prerouting um, this prerouting uh, rule in IP tables stay there. So the port 3308 was open, and of, of course um, Nginx could connect and send queries. Um, if for some reason the logic shall determine that the host should not be open, should not be available then this rule can be removed, and obviously Nginx will see 3308 as closed. Um, so the logic basically is the same because it was derived from a cluster check by Pocona, so the logic is the same, it's just a matter of how the final this redirection um, is, is, has been done. Um, so as a summary, well, as you can see, there are a bunch of options to pick from. Right, so uh, it is really up to you what will work best in your particular case. So if you have some, if you have some knowledge of some tools, like you're running KG proxy, or, um, and, and then you want to just, you know, um, then why not use it for uh, for databases, right? Um, if you need to, um, you know, have some sort of more advanced support. For uh, for the MySQL, you want to do use some features like you know like this uh, query caching, query writing, some advanced query routing. Um, well, you can try to use uh, MaxScale or or ProxySQL, for example. Um, if you happen to work with uh, MySQL NodeDB cluster, or MySQL Fabric, then maybe you know the the MySQL router will be the best option for you because it's kind of integrated with this and it's easily deployable like that. So um, there are a bunch of options. Hope, luckily for us, and it's just a matter of what will actually suit your needs best. So thank you very much, and if you have any questions, then I would love to answer. Yes. Okay, sorry, I just came. 
came closer. Uh, do any of these support uh, chat? Like, if you have set up queries for them, if you're doing this performance and then it goes out to a caller, is there any chance that? Um, no, so the question was, as I, as I understood, if there are some ways for those checks or those health checks to, to implement some more advanced um, logic in terms of the performance, like the of load on the, system, on the proxies or on the database uh, servers, right? Um, no, but these are scripts, so you can you can implement it. Yeah. So that's basically the, the the only you know the only limitations that you have returned to 100, uh, to 200 or 503 HTTP code that's allowed it. Nothing else. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, so, so frankly, I would say uh, for, for me personally, as, as a DBA, I would most likely use proxy score. That's because uh, max scale, I mean, there's a license limitation. And because personally, I like the flexibility. Because, you know, I, I, so the thing is that as a DBA, most of the time you, probably all of you uh, who work as a DBA were in a situation where you just have to, um, you have to do something about databases, but you couldn't actually do because you don't have control over it. Like there's a query just, you know, coming to, uh, you know, to, 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 to the databases, which is like breaking havoc or whatever. And basically up to now, um, up until max scale and the process code showed up, you didn't have a way to um, like really to, to, to detect this kind of problem like that you can detect, but you can you couldn't do nothing about it. Right now, you can use, for example, for max scale, you, you can use this firewall filter, just drop the query. I mean, it's better to drop one single query than drop the whole cluster. For proxy SQL, you can also either drop it or, or cache it or, or whatever. So uh, personally, I like to have as much control over the traffic that is coming through the proxy to, to the databases. Uh, so I would stick to, to those proxies which actually can do this. But of course, if you have setups, because the customers, are, plenty of customers are running AJ proxy and they are pretty happy with this, then why not? If you don't need features, then well, why not? Because every, every new product, every new software brings some bugs, there's just some problems to integrate it. So well, you, you can always just stick to whatever you want if you whatever you have right now. It's just up to you. Okay. So so thank you very much, Diane.